Praise God. I just want to welcome you to another wonderful time in the presence of God. The Bible says that in the presence of God there is fullness of joy and it is called there are pleasures forevermore. I believe that you have come into God's presence today. There's going to be fullness of joy in your life and you're going to enjoy God's presence. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the privilege to come to share in your word again. We ask, Lord, that spirit of truth, you will guide us into all truth. You will illuminate our inner man through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you enemies of the cross of Christ. I want to repeat that again. Enemies of the cross of Christ. Amen. Praise God. And our text is taken, you know, from Philippians chapter 3. Now, going through Philippians chapter 3, Paul writing to the church at Philippi, you know, was short and, and had to draw the attention, you know, of the members of the church to the fact that some of them were living, you know, as enemies of the cross of Christ. Amen. Praise God. And you see this in Philippians chapter 3, you know, verse 18. Now, to be specific, Paul didn't accuse, you know, some of the members of the church as being enemies of Christ. No, he didn't say that they are enemies of Christ. He said specifically that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. That means that you may not be an enemy of Christ, but you, might, you may be an enemy, you know, of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now, when Paul says that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, what Paul is simply saying is, is, that, is that they are against what the cross of Jesus Christ stands for. And, and that becomes, you know, becomes pertinent that we remind ourselves of what the cross, you know, of Jesus Christ stands for, and that will help us, you know, to be able to understand what Paul meant by some are living as enemies of the cross of Christ, because it's not impossible that you also are living, you know, as an enemy of the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. And so, what does the cross of Jesus Christ stand for? Amen. Basically, the cross of Jesus Christ stands for sacrifice, for pains, you know, and sufferings. These three things are key. These are the three characteristics, you know, of the cross of Jesus Christ. Suffering, sacrifice, you know, and pains. These were the things that Jesus Christ went through, you know, when he carried the cross. And ultimately, of course, the cross speaks of death because Jesus Christ had to be crucified, you know, on the cross. So when you're talking about the cross of Jesus Christ, you're talking about, you're talking about the pains, the sufferings, the sacrifice, and ultimately the death of Jesus Christ. And so when Paul said in Philippians 3 verse 18 that some of them are living, you know, as enemies of the cross of Jesus Christ, what he's saying is that the lifestyle of the members of, or some of the members of the church of Philippi was contrary to what the cross of Jesus Christ stood for. Amen. And so I just want to ask you, does your lifestyle or is your lifestyle contrary to what the cross of Jesus Christ stand for? Amen. You see, you need to check yourself. You need to examine yourself. The Bible says, you know, in the book of 2 Corinthians, I believe chapter 11, it says you should examine yourself to know if you are still in the faith. Amen. Are you living your life such that it is contrary to what the cross of Jesus Christ stands for? If that is where you're living your life, then you are also an enemy of the cross of Jesus Christ. And I pray that God will deliver you, you know, from such a lifestyle in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so the cross of Jesus Christ stands for pain, for suffering, for sacrifice, and ultimately for death. And this is what the cross of Jesus Christ, you know, has stood for all through ages. And in fact, the churches that were able to stand the test of time, that were able to last, there were churches, you know, that held on you know, to these major characteristics, you know, of the cross. So as a Christian also, if you're going to run your, if you're going to run your spiritual race swiftly unto the end, successfully and to remain standing, then you've got to be somebody who is living your life, you know, according to what the cross of Jesus Christ stands for. Amen. Praise God. Now, Paul didn't stop there. Paul gave an insight, you know, of the lifestyle of the members of this church. When he talked about certain ways, you know, in which they were, they were living their lives. Amen. Praise God. Again, our text is Philippians chapter 3, verse 18. Amen. Glory to God. Now, so Paul gave some insight of what was happening in the Philippian church that made him to characterize them, you know, as the enemies, you know, of the cross of Christ. He said that the God of these people was their belly. Amen. That means that their God was the gratification, you know, of the desires of the flesh. They would do anything to satisfy the desires of the flesh. Amen. Praise God. You know, and the Bible warns us, you know, against the desires of the flesh. In fact, in Colossians chapter 3, the Bible says, mortify the deeds of the flesh. Mortify the desires of the flesh. Deaden them. Kill them. Don't let them, you know, have room over you. But in the case of the Philippian church, they were, they've actually gotten to the point that they are allowed 
you know, the desires of the flesh, you know, to overrule their spirituality. And so Paul said they are enemies of the cross of Jesus Christ because they were gratifying the desires, you know, of the flesh. They would do anything to satisfy even this desire. Amen. Praise God. Now, now, now to, to simply put it, what Paul was saying, it was pain, saying concerning the Philippian church was that they were appetite driven. Amen. And appetite includes appetite for wealth, appetite for fame, appetite for sexual pleasures, you know, and so on and so forth. They were not prepared to undergo any suffering, you know, that the gospel will expose them to. And you have Christians like that. Any suffering that the gospel of Jesus Christ will expose them to, you know, they are not ready to participate in it. They would rather shy away from it. If you're shying away from the sufferings that the gospel of Jesus Christ will expose you to, then it means that you are living, you know, as an enemy of the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. And you have, you know, if, if you example, um, if you example in this area, the people that would rather choose easy and, you know, and convenient way of life. Praise God. Now, a few weeks ago in this city, you know, there was a news in the print media of somebody saying that it doesn't matter, you know, if you, if, if, if you have sex with somebody that you're planning to, to, to get married to. Now, it says that because you are engaged, because you are in courtship, therefore you can have sex. That is simply a gratification of the desire of the flesh because that is contrary to the word of God. The Bible talks about the marriage, you know, you know being, being pure and that anyone who defiles it, he says, God himself says he will avenge. He is the one who is going to fight such a person. Sex is only permissible as far as the word of God is concerned in the book of Hebrews under, under marital injunction. It is when you are married that God permits, permits both partners to have sex. As long as you are not yet married, the marriage itself has not been consummated. You have no legal right as far as the Bible is concerned to indulge you know, in anything you know, related to sex. So if you do that, it means that you are satisfying the desire of the flesh and that you are living as an enemy of the cross of Jesus Christ and you need to repent from that. Amen. Praise God. Sex outside of marriage is either fornication or adultery and the word of God is expressly, you know, against it. Amen. Praise God. Now, Paul says further that, Paul says further, and you're still talking about the lifestyle that the, that the members of the, of, of, of the Philippian church were living that made him to classify them as the members, sorry, as the enemies of the cross of Christ. He said they were minding earthly things. Their mind was set on earthly things. Their mind was set on things that were not of internal value. Instead of placing the focus, the focus of their mind on things, on, on things of eternal value, on heavenly things, their mind was on earthly things. And once you are minding earthly things, that is, you allow the earthly things to take control of your mind, then you are an enemy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because even the book of Romans, you know, chapter 8, says that the carnal mind is enmity with God. It cannot be at peace with God. It cannot be a friend of God. It's not that it will not. It cannot. Amen. Praise God. So if you have a carnal mind, and that is a mind that is set on earthly things, a mind that is overwhelmed by earthly things, you are simply an enemy of the cross of Jesus Christ. And you need to repent. You need to cry to God to take such a mind from you and to fill you with the mind of Christ as, as it's exemplified, you know, in Philippians chapter 2. Amen. Praise God. And, and, and so the focus of, of the larger the, the, the larger part of, 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 the, of the Philippian church would not rather grab anything, you know, for the satisfaction of the desires of the flesh since their mind was even on the earthly things. Amen. Praise God. And do you know that the greatest attack of Satan upon the church is, is to focus, is to make them to focus on earthly things? Amen. Satan wants to take absolute control of your mind so that you are more concerned, you are preoccupied with the earthly things and that you lose your focus, you, you know, for heavenly things. In Colossians chapter 3, Paul writing to the church at Colossae, he said unto them, set your affection on things above and not on things on the earth, where you are seated, you know, with Christ Jesus at the right hand of God. Amen. So your mind, it doesn't mean that you don't think about the things of the mind, but you don't allow the things of the mind, the, sorry, the things of the earth to occupy your entire mind so that there is no place for God in it. Amen. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is peace. When you set your affection on things above, when you set your affection on Jesus Christ, when you set your affection on heavenly things, on eternal things, then you are going to have the peace of God. But if your affection is set on the earthly things, then you are obviously living your life as an enemy of the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now, are you complacent? You know, have you become complacent as a Christian? 
seeking to avoid the pains, you know, and the sufferings that the preaching of the gospel will expose you to, if that is your case, then you are an enemy of the cross of Jesus Christ. You know, Paul in his writing to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1, he said unto Timothy, be thou a partaker of the sufferings of Jesus Christ according to the gospel, according to the power of God. Amen. So God does not expect you. God does not expect you to shy away from the sufferings, you know, that the preaching of the gospel we expose you to. God expects you to be a partaker of the sufferings, you know, of Christ, which of course you're living a godly life we expose you to. If you don't do that, again, as I said, God says you are an enemy of the cross of Jesus Christ. And I want to pray for you again. May you not be an enemy of the cross of Jesus Christ. And the only way in which you can do that is by one, setting your affection on things above, not focus, not being an earthly minded person. And then also, you know, doing what God expects you to do, living a godly life, irrespective, even if it means exposing you to sufferings and pains, you know, and, and sac making sacrifices which God expects of you as a child of God. As I conclude, Paul, writing to the Philippian church, he said unto them, some of you are living here. And in fact, he said it weeping. You are living your lives as someone who is an enemy of the cross of Jesus Christ. How are you living your life? Are you living your life in conformity with what the cross stands for? The cross stands for pain, for suffering, for sacrifices, and ultimately for death. Is that the way you're living your life? Or you're living your life against what the cross of Jesus Christ stands for? May God give you the grace to turn around and to begin to live your life, you know, in line with what the cross of Jesus Christ stands for. May God bless you. May the Lord prosper you. May the Lord strengthen you to live according and to be a partaker of the sufferings that the gospel will expose you to in Jesus' name. God bless you. It's time in his time. All things beautiful